Welcome to Adapting Class. I know you click on this video because you're looking for answers related to pharmacological questions. Well, this video explores the most commonly missed pharmacological questions, or you are likely to mix them um, because that's what I've seen on my QBank. It provides clear explanation on the key concepts and then strategy to avoid mistakes about these uh, uh, questions regarding this medication and some pitfall so that you can be more prepared to answer the question. So let's get to it. Let me show you what I mean by that. Some few questions and then we can get to it. Um, so this is the first question. And this is what? Administering a norepinephrine to a client in septic shock. Which action is the most important? Read the question from the back. Which action is the most important? That means prioritization. The word most is a prioritization. And this is administering no epinephrine to a client in septic shock. The way they will ask you questions regarding pharmacology, if they give you the name of the medication, sometimes they give you the function. No epinephrine is the medication. The function is for septic shock. So we can use it in septic shock. If the patient is in shock, what should you worry about? Blood pressure, right? Hypoperfusion is shock. So we want to improve perfusion. Therefore, which is the most important? You see what I did? I connect the dot. I know shock is hypoperfusion. If I'm giving you no epinephrine, I should be worried about your blood pressure to improve, to improve perfusion. Therefore, monitoring glucose is not the problem. Why? It's a, it's a beta adrogenic, right? It's going to increase your sugar level. It's not the priority. Administer the medication through IV, peripheral IV, no? It can, it's a vesicant. It can cause a vasoconstriction. We want to give it to you through a central line. Titrate the infusion based on your blood pressure. So you titrate it based on the individual blood pressure and map mean arterial blood pressure, right? Monitor for signs of bronchospasm. It does not affect, okay, your beta um, to and receptors. It's not like that. It's not a beta blocker. So this is the trap. Therefore, the right answer is titrating the infusion based on your blood pressure. Which medication have the most potential risks for injury? That is the key. This is the key word. Which medication have the most potential risks for injury? And this is performing a medication reconciliation for a client being admitted to the hospital. Select or apply. Stay back. Ask yourself what is being asked medication with the most risks of injury is a selected apply not all of them will be an answer but what is the key a patient taking this at risk of injury every time you see the word at risk of injury think about orthostatic hypotension or dizziness there are some medications that you when you take it you are at risk of injury because not because of something is happening because of the major side effect injury is related to four we call this bears criteria these there are some few medications that are on the bears medicate uh, criteria b e e r you can google it it tell you most anti medications most of them are on it antihypertensive antipsychotic antidepressant there's a bunch of them in it but the most common one is what I've given to you. Buspirone, it's anxiolytic. It's atypical anxiolytic. It does not cause sedation. Therefore, it's gone. It's a bus. You, it will take you wherever you want to go. You can take it and drive. Lorazepam is a benzo. It causes sedation. It's independent. So this, you can, you're going to fall. Aprosolum is the same thing. Benzos, you're going to fall. Diphenylhydramine is antihistamine, sedation, you're going to fall. Nortriptyline is what? Antidepressant, right? It's a TCA, tricyclic antidepressant, side effect, sedation and falling. Clonidine, alpha blocker, it causes orthostatic hypertension. hypertension. This is why we take it at night, you're going to fall. These are medications that you should know. Which situation, clinical situation, the nurse should question? That means there's a situation there you should question. That is the key word. Those are the bars where question the situation, whether the combination of the medication is effective. And let's care for several clients. 
which situation should you question? Look at the question and see if the two of them are okay to be coexist, right? A client on phenoxin for depression is prescribed pseudoephedrine for cold. Think about it. Phenoxin is what? A phenoxin is what? It's MOI. MOI, what is the major problem? Hypertensive agency. If you take pseudoephedrine, you give it combination of this medication will also cause hypertension. Therefore, you should avoid it. I will question it. A client on aprazolam, that sedation is used for anxiety, it's used for anxiolytic, right? It's used for anxiolytic. But you can combine it with antidepressant without any problem because they do different things. A client on respiridum for schizophrenia, it causes what? Weight gain, um, hyperglycemia, and then apolipidemia. If you prescribe metformin, that will take care of what? Your glucose level going up. So that's good. A client on carbamazepine for epilepsy is prescribed what? Combine oral contraception. Carbamazepine make oral contraception ineffective. So you need a barrier method. Therefore, this we get a question. A client on what? Aropirido for schizophrenia will develop extra pyramidal side effect. Would you use anticholinergic? Benzodropine is anticholinergic. So we give aropirido in combination with benzodropine to prevent extra pyramidal syndrome as side effect associated with that. Therefore, this is not a problem. A client on lithium for bipolar is prescribed endometrosine for knee pain. Lithium, you should not take anything that will affect your kidney. Endometrosine is an NSAID. If you take it, it affects your kidney. Therefore, we should question that. Which one we should question is D and F. Which statement by the parent require further teaching? And as she's teaching the parent about respiratory sensation virus treatment, treatment of uh, uh, RSV is very important. The kids have runny nose, they have cough, and you need to take care of them. Some Most of the time, they don't need medication, but some people, it can get severe, they will need some treatment. A baby might need ribavirin if the infection is severe. Look at it. Virin, R-I-N, is always uh, used for antiviral. So this is good. Palivizumab can prevent RSV in high risk patient. The medication you're supposed to know is palivizumab. We use it for high risk patient in RSV. Know it. I can give my baby cough syrup if they are congested. What is RSV? A bunch of runny nose. You should let your nose run. That's why you suck it out. If you give them cough suppressant, they cannot clear their secretion, they get into trouble. I should keep my baby hydrated to help clear the secretion. So need further teaching is C. You should not give them anything that will uh, block them from clearing their secretion. Which assessment finding is most concerning? And this is caring for a client at 32 weeks gestation receiving endometrosine for preterm labor. Which of these is very concerning? If you're receiving endometrosine for preterm labor, which finding is concerning? Endometrosine is NSAID. It causes decreased amniotic fluid. Any amniotic fluid less than five centimeters, that's the index, it means you have oligoandramine. That can cause a problem. Therefore, this is a problem. Maternal heart rate of 92 sound normal. Blood pressure of this is also normal. A mild nausea after taking the medication, yeah, it makes you uh, nauseated because it's an NSAID. But ammonia fluid level less than three is bad. You need at least five. What is the next priority action? A client receiving seasonal calling for rapid sequence intubation sadly develop muscle rigidity and Temperature of 104. Key, I'm getting intubated for probably surgery or something like that. I don't say surgery, but it's receiving this for what? Yeah, muscle relaxant to, uh, for rapid intu intubation. All of a sudden, we have muscle rigidity and temperature, the epithemia. This is malignant epithemia. Treatment, 
for this is naturally to relax the muscle. So before you, first you have to stop the medication, give them antidote, which is gentling, cool them down, IV fluid and all. So ice pack, you will do it. Discontinue, you should continue IV fluid. You should not notify the healthcare provider, but dantrolene is the prescribed medication. Which finding is most concerning? And this is administering tibetaline to a client in preterm labor. Which one is most concerning? Know that tibetaline is for preterm labor. It's a beta agonist. Beta agonist will speed things up. Your heart rate of 155, right? Your fetal heart rate of 155 is normal. Blood glucose of 140, you expect the glucose to go up. It's because it's a beta agonist. Heart rate of 120 is supposed to go up, right? Maternal complaint of tremor is all. You think about it. This question is the same as abodro. You have tremor, you have tachycardia, you have hyperglycemia. But which one is more dangerous? A is normal. Between blood glucose of 140, heart rate of 120, and mild tremor, this is the bad one. Heart rate of 120 is ventricular response is too high. Which statement by the parent indicate correct understanding? And then she's teaching the parent of a child with ADHD about metaphenidate. Your board love metaphenidate. It's used for what? ADHD. What should you worry about it? Growth retardation. Growth retardation. Growth retardation. There's other side effects. There's hypertension. There's hallucination. There's tremor. And there's a, a insomnia. All of them is acceptable but remember the key is growth retardation therefore i will give the medication right before bedtime right it's not good it causes insomnia this medication can cause my child to gain weight you no know, lose weight because they decrease his appetite i should monitor my child height and weight this is good the medication will cure it does not cure your child you control the symptoms what is the next best action? And this is caring for a client schedule for cerebral angiogram. That means they need contrast, right? Cerebral angiogram to look into the vessels in the brain. Who takes metformin? What do you do? You know cerebral angiogram means contrast. If you take metformin, which you hold it for four hours, 48 hours, then wait 48 hours later before resuming the medication. Giving the medication is not acceptable. Holding it for 48 hours is good. Increase the patient IV fluid, fine, it's good, but it has nothing to do with metformin. Monitor the patient blood glucose hourly. It's not going to change anything. You're going to get nephropathy, kidney problem. Therefore, true lytic acidosis. Therefore, you should hold it 48 hours. The client taking lithium as a lithium level of 2.1. Which symptoms should the nurse expect? This is a hard one. Lithium level is like 0.5 to 1.2, um, right? If it goes above that, greater than 1.5, that's when toxicity level okay. When you take lithium, you're going to have mild tremor. That is therapeutic level. When you get to the therapeutic level, you're going to have polyuria. When you get to the therapeutic level, you're going to have increased test at the therapeutic level, but cause tremor, confusion, attachia, incisions, a bad problem. So those are the one um, you should uh, you should be expect that will based on the level of uh, um, lithium. That's what you're going to expect. Which statement by the client indicate a need for further teaching? A client with GERD is prescribed omeprazole. Omeprazole. Which one need further teaching? You know it's a PPI, right? And it's going to decrease acid, right? You got to bring your content. If I'm going to take it to decrease my acid, that means I should take it before meal. I should take the medication before meal. It's good. I should take the medication for the rest of my life. The complication associated with PPI, omeprazole, is osteoporosis, C. diff, and pneumonia. Therefore, you don't take it the rest of your life. We try to get you to the lowest dose as much as possible. Whatever dose you're taking, we give you the little to for the therapeutic effect. And we need to increase my calcium intake because of osteoporosis. It causes decrease in calcium. This medication reduces stomach acid. Yes, it does. Based on this, which one needs further teaching? This is not right. 
And it's easy to mix it because you think you can take it the rest of your life. But you have to know that most of them, they will need a small dose. What is the next priority action? A client taking clozapine for schizophrenia report fever and sore throat. What is your priority action? You have to be sharp. And what is B sharp? Breathing, electrolyte, shock, sepsis, airway, right? And then pain. What is the problem? I think clozapine, the major side effect, a granulocytosis. If you have sore throat, it's going to be bad. How do I know you're getting sick? Check in your white count. Give them Tyron for the fever. It's not going to solve the problem with clozapine. Reassuring the client is not good. Checking A and C is the way you can know their white count, the WBC level. Encourage client to drink fluidy, fluid, a lot of fluid is fine. That will decrease the fever. The, the underlying problem is not solved. What should when should Rogan be administered? Rh negative matter delivered Rh positive. Usually, if you have Rh negative, you deliver Rh negative, you're good. But as soon as you deliver Rh positive baby, we have a problem. There will be iso uh, immunization that such that the baby, there will be reaction and that can kill the baby. So when do we give Rogan to prevent that? It's at 28 weeks and within 72 hours. So not at 24 weeks. Join or during the next pregnancy, only if the mother develop antibodies. We don't want her to develop antibodies. So within 72 hours. The client is prescribed doxycycline for acne. Which statement at discharge indicate correct understanding? Doxycycline is in a group of tetracycline. There's specific side effects. You cannot drink milk with it. Okay. You cannot take antacid with it. Okay. Those are all very, very important. It's a teratogenic, so you got to wear barrier method. It causes photosensitivity. All these things you have to pay attention. It causes esophagitis also. So I'll take these medications with milk to prevent upset. That's not good. I should use sunscreen when going outside. Yes, it causes photosensitivity, photosensitivity because it's a sulfur drug. I can stop taking the medication when my skin clears up. No, you cannot abruptly stop it. I should take the medication at bedtime. There is no restriction when you take it. So this is the end of it. Thank you for watching. These are 14 questions that stimulate your mind. And as you can see, they're very, very straightforward. But there's a content I use to answer the question. I hope you catch it. Good luck. Best of luck. Bye.